Right, we're going to attempt to lay this Tillig number, I think it's a number 10 turnout today. I'm using Tillig turnouts because uh, they're the only, as far as I know, the only manufactured turnout that has a spring switch or a heelless switch, as we call it down here. And I think that's pretty groovy. The only other way that I know of to get a heelless switch or a spring switch is to uh, use fast tracks or make them yourself, which I really don't have the time, so. I'm also using, uh, as you know, we've said in the track lane episode, that I'm using this uh, foam underlay, this Aussie made foam underlay. And when you're doing a turnout, obviously, you have to uh, get it up each side of the turnout. So the easiest thing to do is to split it, like I've done here. Just down the guts, and I've already marked the turnout where it has to go. So I've got some pencil marks here, so we'll just line that up there. And just bring this one, this one out. Make sure that your sleepers aren't riding up on the side. These tilly turnouts, the sleepers are irregular, uh, which is, I suppose, reasonably prototypical in some ways. So just make sure they're not riding up on the outside of the turnout. That looks good. So actually lining up the, uh, the foam here with the pencil marks I've got on the outside, I've already realigned this turnout where it has to go. So, now, before I forget to tell you, trendsetters, it's very important not to have timber underneath where your point motor's going. Yes, guess who forgot to do that on a couple of bits? Yes, who's gonna move the timber now? Yes. Well, because underneath here, is our turnout motor. Sorry, I just said, where are we? So when you're, when you're doing your bench work, just uh, keep in mind where your turnouts are going so you don't put a lump of 4B2 under the damn thing. This one, fortunately, is okay. So how do we mark our turnout where our point motor has to go? Because, you know, with the, I'm using tortoise point motors, you've got to be pretty accurate, like within a couple of mil. Otherwise, your throw bar will hit the hole where it comes up through the, uh, through the baseboard. So I've devised a sneaky little way, I'm sure other people do this, but anyway, I'll show you how we uh, align the turnout with the road bed in place. Now if you're using cork, of course, you can just put the turnout on the cork and mark where it has to go, drill a hole and Bob's your uncle, but with, uh, with this foam, it comes up with the turnout, so, and it's not very accurate to sort of put a pencil mark on the foam and all that sort of thing, so I'll show you how to get a, a pinpoint accuracy trend service. Now I just have to uh, trim the foam here where the uh, throw bars are. So I'm just going to do uh, slice there, oops, where are we? Slice there on the wrong side of the camera. Slice there and a slice there. And we'll just nick this little, this uh, road bed has a little edge on it for the ballast. So these uh, point motor sleepers right up over that. So we'll just scallop this little bit off here. Can you see that? My big hand in the road there. Like that. Well, I like these little modelling knives because you can snap them off and get a new blade every time. You, know, you don't need to uh, sharpen them. So I think they're good trenchers. Always use a really sharp knife. If you use a blunt knife, you've got more chance of cutting yourself because you have to push harder as the bishop said to the stripper. Use a sharp knife. Sure, you can still cut yourself with a blunt knife, but you're going to be pushing a hell of a lot harder when you do. If you cut yourself with a sharp knife, well then, you should have been paying attention a bit more. So we've done that now, so our timber sleepers can sit in that little um, crevasse there. Okay, now what you do, you get yourself a couple of uh, track pins or spikes and you cut the head off like that and you file it around so you've got no jagged edges on there and these will be your locator pins on the turnout. So do, you know, two or three of those. Right, yeah, we've got our turnout in place. I've, uh, I've done a bit of wriggling here just to seat the sleepers into the foam because a couple of sleepers are a little bit wider than the foam down this end. So just give it a wriggle to set them in and I've run the uh, curb side of the turnout, the foam, spread it out to run that way. So we've got a little uh, in 
inlay in the middle there that we have to fill in with uh, just some flat foam after, road bed after, but we'll do that later. So we'll just line her up here with the road base there. Line the other end up here. Now at the moment all we're doing is aligning the points for the point motor, the turnout for the point motor. We're not actually aligning the track perfectly yet. These, because these tillings are flexible turnouts, they're a pain to lay, especially the long ones. You can actually turn, turn this turnout into a wide turnout or almost a, a very broad curved turnout. They're a great idea, but I tell you what, they're harder to pick than a broken nose as far as uh, laying the track really well. Anyway, what we're doing at the moment is aligning our turnout motor. So, so then we get our pin that we've uh, cut the head off. And we chuck him in there. And just give it a... Not too much because you're going to have to be pulling it out but not so it wobbles around. And we go up the other end. Now as with any turnout, this around the frog section is where you want the turnout to be supported really well and also down with the switch section, down at the uh, toe of the switch. But the frog section you want it um, supported and you also want it flat. So I've got to fill, fill in here with my underlay later on, but I'll do that when I take the turnout back up again. But for now, I'm just going to put another locating pin in here, in this end. So we've got the turnout pretty well where we want it when we actually put it back down again. Because remember, at the moment, we're only aligning the front for the turnout motor. I so say these things can take, you know, an hour or so to line up one of these things. Okay, another pin in here. And now I'm not hitting the rail. Right, we have our two locator pins, one here and one here. So that's, that's going to allow us to put the turnout back in in exactly the right spot. Now all we have to do is drill our template for our throwover bar. Right, we've got our hole in our throwover bar here. And obviously for the tortoise machine, you need to get that in the centre of the throwover position. So pick somewhere that you think's in the middle between reverse and normal, which is probably about there. Then get another spike and whack him through the hole. Whack him, whack him. Now you're saying, why, why aren't I just marking this on the ply? Well, if I marked it on the ply transitors and then I laid the turnout with the foam, how would I know where the hell I am? So that's one advantage with the cork because the cork is glued down and stays there and you can mark it easier on the cork. Yes, you can glue this underlay down uh, and then lay the track on top later on, or glue them both down together, but I like to do it this way. And plus, when you're marking the foam, the foam can move. You, when, you, uh, when you're lining up for these tortoises or any points machine, you're really dealing with tight tolerances, so I like to uh, mark it all correctly. So we've got our, we've got our uh, point blades, our switch blades in the middle, between reverse and normal, somewhere in the middle. And we've got our spike in here marking that. So I'll give that a bit of a tap down. Now that, that has to come out obviously. Uh, or you can actually leave it in there if you cut the head off, but I just, I just give it a bit of a mark and then just wriggle it out. Because I know, I know that there's going to be a little mark off to one side and that's, that's where that is. So we'll rip this off and see how our marks are going. Right, we've taken our turn it off and here are our two locating pins. It's number one and number two. And I can see just over here, you probably can't see it on the camera, but there's a little nick there, which is uh, the middle of my throw bar. So that's good, we're all lined up, ready to drill. Right, we've got a little, uh, a little nick there from the pin. 
So the drill sits nice in there. Use a pilot hull first. Always start off with a small drill. On the correct speed. Right. And following up with a bigger one. Also, try and keep your drill vertical. Uh, if you can get one, a drill with a little bubble on the end, that would be fantastic. Don't push too hard either. If you push too hard, you'll break out the ply underneath, and that just uh, makes it harder to line it up. That's good. Right, now all we have to do is sit the turnout back on top. Right, we've got our locator pins, so I just need to put the foam back on top. And I've put a little couple of marks here so I know roughly where the, where the underlay has to go. There we go, let's come through there like that. That's up there. Now, another good idea is to cut the hole for the throw bar. So we've cut the foam in the hole there for our, in the foam for our throw bar hole there, which is through there. There's our locating pin for the front one. So we just make sure we put the turnout back onto there, line it up with the locating pin at the other end, and the turnout will be exactly in line where we put it. Let's so say if you're using uh, if you're using cork, well you can glue the cork down, I suppose, and mark the turnout spacing and everything on the cork and drill through the cork and all that sort of thing. So in some ways cork's probably a little bit easier. Uh, you know, it's horses for courses, I suppose. Whatever. Floats your boat, man. Alright, so let's put this mofo back on here. Okay, just align the front pin here. Got to be very gentle with these tilly turnouts because they're flexible. Uh, you've got to be really gently bently with them. Once they're in place, they're really good. But uh, laying them because they're flexible, uh, a bit like the prototype, I suppose. You have to be really careful. Now I'm just making sure. The foam along here, the underlay, is uh, out from the sleepers, so none of the sleepers are caught underneath. Because it has a ridge on it, it will lift it up a little bit. That's good. So we'll get two locating pins, one here and one here, in there like that. And if I look down, my throw bar is in perfect position with the hole there, that's good. Now there's probably other ways to do that. Um, marking it with a pencil and all that sort of thing. But you can't really go wrong. If you put the pins in, uh, there's no lines to get marked out. And, all that. And, all, and then all you do now is uh, we'll spike the turnout up and then we can pull the pins out and it's ready to roll. So I can go and have another cup of tea 
and uh, catch up with some uh, some friends who have just left after a uh, tea party. And uh, so I think we should get and do that now and uh, refresh ourselves and maybe make another booking. And uh, we will see you back here shortly for part two, uh, or should I say part B, of uh, episode eight of the BNSF Birdwood Subdivision. And, uh, well, I hope we can also contain our excitement until we return to this particular uh, segment. So this is our Lord Standard Day saying uh, goodbye for now. You didn't take any harm to you, darling.